Hey guys, needless to say, I did a little bit of testing on this protein sparing bread, and I wanna show you what I figured out. So let's get started. Welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. And here we make delicious pastries, many from my time as a pastry chef. And my goal is to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoy these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button down there, giving the video a thumbs up, leaving me a comment. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today, we are diving into the world of the protein sparing bread. And when I tell you I did some testing, I got up to number 17 on my tests. And this is just because I wanted to make sure that the version I was doing was better than everything else or an improvement on it. Now, I'm still a little under the weather, so you gotta bear with me here. But as soon as I saw it, I was watching Indigo Nilly's videos on the butter powder and I don't have butter powder on hand, but I do have heavy cream powder. So I was thinking it's another, it's the same kind of fat pretty much. So could I use that in replace of the butter powder? And it did work well. But then I also thought, can I use yeast and can I bloom yeast? And can I get it to rise and to be like a regular loaf of bread? And I think I got pretty darn close to regular bread. I actually like it better in like a flatbread form almost. Like I made a big Philly cheesesteak on like a big oval of this bread and it was delicious. But I wanna go over all the ingredients I use because they're all there for a specific reason. Like I tried doing things without certain ingredients to make it easier and some people don't like psyllium husks, some people don't want the heavy cream, some people don't want this and that. So I wanted to try and figure out if you could take away some of these ingredients or not. And as I go through, I'll let you know the reasons for all these different ingredients. So enough talking about that. Let's get started on the recipe. It does take a while because you are proofing bread, which is kind of cool. I have to preheat my oven now because we need a lot of extra help to get our stuff going because, you know, keto ingredients. So 325 on that. Okay, I'm also going to show you the easiest way to do this. I'm going to make sure I get all this right too. I haven't made it in like almost a week now because I made a crap ton of it for my bridal shower that ended up getting canceled. So like I was planning ahead and like getting it all ready and then it all went to crap. So I gotta make sure. Okay, so what I do, I have my, what is it called? Measuring cup with my thermometer in it. And my cats are going crazy already. I have this set on grams. It's about a cup and a quarter of water, but I'm gonna obviously weigh it. 292 grams and we need this at around 110. I try to get it a little bit higher than 110 because when you put it into the metal bowl it cools it down which is fine as long as it doesn't go below 100 you're fine but it'll take longer to bloom. Okay we're at 110. My scale went off of course. Then I'm using active dry yeast. I was using packets, but I was going through so many packets. I just ended up going online and buying a big bag of active dry yeast, especially because I'm probably gonna be making this recipe a lot because I miss bread and it is great for so many things. So we're gonna have that ready. And then there's two options to activate your yeast. Either one teaspoon of honey, which I have been told that the yeast eats up all the sugar, but I know some people don't want to use that. The other thing is inulin. And this stuff is a little tricky. It is very, very, very sticky. So whatever you do, don't have wet hands when you go and scoop this stuff because it'll stick really bad. But two teaspoons of inulin. So we're already down to 109. So we want to get this going. 292 grams. Two. There you go. And then you're going to do two teaspoons of inulin or one teaspoon of honey. You want to make sure it's nice and dissolved in there. The inulin is six grams. It's kind of like really powdery. 
So it's kind of hard to get it to come off your spoon too. So that's why I like to measure in grams just to know that I get the same thing every time because I'm testing so many recipes. I think I need to change my battery on my scale. It's been acting kind of funny lately. If that ever happens to you, that's probably the reason if your scale's acting up, it's probably because the batteries are low. And then the yeast is <clears throat> eight grams of yeast. It's two and a quarter teaspoons. Say nine grams, that's what I meant, right? which that was nine grams. I just overdid a little bit on the teaspoon. So give it a whisk, get your yeast dissolved in there. And then we're gonna set this in front of the warm stove. This helps the yeast bloom quicker because it will take a while, especially if your kitchen is cool, but that speeds up the process. So that's going over there. And then while that's going, you can get all the rest of your ingredients ready to go. Okay, time for the rest of the ingredients and to explain. Now I'm using psyllium husk this gives a fluffy structure to our baked goods i use it in my donut recipe i've seen it in several other i watch flave city and she does a lot of paleo bread and she uses it in almost every one of her bread recipes and i use it in my bread recipe it gives just a lightness to it and I tried making it without it, but we're gonna be proofing this loaf of bread. And I did it without it, and when it was proofing, the allulose leaked out of the egg white. So this keeps the allulose inside of your loaf of bread. It ended up getting like super hard and like, like almost rubbery on the bottom of the loaf and the little muffins I made because of the allulose leaking out. So it is actually very essential to have this, which I need to get my other thing. So you need two teaspoons, <laughs> two teaspoons, two tablespoons, which is 10 grams, two tablespoons. I don't know if I said tablespoons or not. It'll be a miracle if I don't mess something up in this video. <laughs> so that's ready to go. I have a heavy cream powder. It does work without it, and it actually is really good without it even, but the flavor isn't as good. So this just adds a little bit of flavor to your bread that we're lacking with just having just egg whites and allulose. So 24 grams of, make sure, heavy cream powder. This is just something I already had on hand, which is why I didn't want to get the butter powder because I use this for my keto mochas that we take into the woods because we have to use water and putting some heavy cream powder in the mix with the cocoa makes it really delicious and creamy without having to bring milk with us. So each tablespoon is supposed to be only six grams. So that'd be 24 if we did four tablespoons, but that was three and I'm already at 23. So that's why I always say measure with a scale because that was only three tablespoons and it was 24 grams when the back of the package says each tablespoon is only six grams. So we're setting that to the side. These are all the usual ingredients in a protein sparing bread. Your egg white, your allulose, your cream of tartar, and your salt. I followed, um, like I said earlier, I followed Indigo Nelly's butter powder recipe and she cut it down, which I actually like the look of the loaf when it's like not insanely huge. So that's the recipe I followed. And I didn't even realize that a lot of people make it with regular egg whites. I just stuck with the egg white powder. And then after watching more videos, I realized, oh, they started out this recipe with 12 egg whites, which I did not know. But I just find this way easier than separating eggs for sure. So I followed her recipe there. She'll be linked below along with uh, Maria Emrich, the original creator of the protein sparing bread. But this is my second bag already and it's almost gone. I need 100 grams egg white, which I believe is supposed to be a cup and a quarter. But it's like Indigo Nilly said, it's really easy to over measure on this. So she suggests going a little bit light on the cup and a quarter because it's so light and fluffy. I use all my protein scoops that I've had from all the protein powders I've used, 100. And then 
I did a lot of testing with Ellulose. Ellulose is, besides the browning that it gives, Ellulose also has a softening effect on our keto baked goods. So the first couple of recipes, I was doubling the Ellulose and I liked it. Like I didn't think it was that sweet, but some people might think it is too sweet. This is up to you. You can add a quarter cup of allulose. You can add two tablespoons. You can add a half cup of allulose. The more allulose you add though, the softer your bread is gonna be. Had to check on our yeast. It's getting bubbly. Okay, and then, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut the difference. I'm gonna do 40, I'm gonna do 60 grams. And I kind of actually prefer the honey because I like the flavor it gives our bread. The problem with inulin also is it causes upset stomach in some people. Like my mom is sensitive to it with the keto products she gets. So keep that in mind also. But I find like the honey, it just like gives you almost a honey wheat flavor to your bread. So I kept all this the same, half teaspoon salt, half teaspoon of the cream of tartar. That's it. Those are all our ingredients. Now I gotta get my mixer up here. You can see our yeast is all bubbly in there. That's what you want. Put that on there. And while this is all whipping, you can get your pan ready, but I'm gonna show you before I even get it started here. I'm just gonna give it a light spray. This is my biggest loaf pan, 9.25 by 5.25. Now, if I can remember how I do this. <sighs> okay, it is, so I cut right along the one, two, three, fourth line in the long way. And I put this one down this way. And this one this way. And then I crease these guys so they're not flying up on you. Get as flat as you can in there, which you can do too, because that one's not sitting flat because there's no spray under it. You gotta get it stuck down. There's our pan ready. Set that to the side. Okay, so our yeast is all bubbly in there. We need our whisk, obviously. Now this, there's a couple different steps to this because to activate psyllium husk, you need warm water. So you need to put this in first, give it a mix, and then we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. I almost forgot, I got a cool Christmas gift. Two tablespoons of psyllium husk in there. And give it a mix. Give it a scrape. Get all that in there, their little mix. And then it's just like all the other recipes, you add all this stuff into your water at once. You whip it on high speed for five minutes. So I'm just gonna add all that in at once. Obviously you start on low speed to get it incorporated. Then once you look like a mush in there, blast it for five minutes. Okay, it has been five minutes and it is stiff. That's what you want. When I did this, this is the first recipe I actually tried. And then I just did a bunch of tests after to make sure I needed all the ingredients I had and all the different, so I couldn't believe it when I whipped it up and it whipped up even though there's yeast and the psyllium husk in there. I thought for sure something was gonna happen to where it wasn't gonna whip up, but it did. And to this is where we're gonna add the heavy cream powder. Now, just like Indigo Nilly's, you could use butter powder, and I bet it'd give an even better flavor to this, but this just adds a little bit more flavor than if you were not to add anything at all. Same thing, don't whip too much on this, just on low speed to combine it. Are 
ready to give it a little blast and then do a scrape. You do gotta make sure you incorporate it pretty well if you watch any of her videos. See, the thing is with this is you don't get a stripe of memory foam anywhere because of the, the yeast. So even if you don't mix it all the way, you're not gonna get like any bits of memory foam. The yeast completely takes care of that. It like lifts it up. That's why I like this recipe. I'm give it a little bit of a stir. The hardest part about this is trying to get it in here and not getting any gaps. I got one whole loaf that had a whole line with nothing in the middle because it wasn't tamped down enough. So you just gotta really make sure you get it in there well. Take your time with it. Otherwise you're gonna have holes in your bread. The other hard part, whoop, the other hard part about this is you have to wait for it to proof. I go at least an hour, you can go longer too. The biggest thing is to keep rotating it in front of your warm oven, because whatever part is facing the heat more is gonna rise more. And then there's a couple different ways you can like do the scoring. I've done it where after it proofed, I scored it down the middle. But what will happen here is the top will crust over and like the egg whites harden almost like on top of the bread. So it makes it kind of difficult. You gotta kind of just scrape the hardened egg white like off the center. Or you can just do a divot right in the middle. Sometimes it's easier than others. Sometimes it's like a way drier meringue. Sometimes it's really wet. Like Indigo Nilly said, this bread sometimes has a mind of its own. And anything that is on the sides will like dry and flake into your bread. You wanna get rid of that. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in front of my oven with it still preheated to 325. And I'm just, just gonna keep an eye on it and keep rotating it in front of the warm air. I'll be back. I'll probably be giving you a little update progress photos in the middle to show you that it is actually rising. And then we'll be back to bake it. 30 minutes. One hour, not quite risen enough, so I'm gonna go 15 more minutes. Okay, it has been about an hour and 20 minutes or so. I let it rise a little bit longer. It all depends on how close you have it to the heat, how much it rises. And I had it a little bit further back, but if you have it too close, it will start cooking the outside of your bread. So you don't want it too close. But you see our divots almost gone, so you can also Kind of cut this away a little bit. It like hardens on top. There we go. We're gonna pop this into a 325 degree oven for 30 minutes and I am gonna turn halfway through. See you back here when it comes out of the oven. Okay, I pulled it out at 28 minutes cause it looked like it was done. The thing I love about this is because there's yeast in it, it smells like you're baking a loaf of bread. It smells like bread in here. And it's super soft. Super soft inside. I just let this sit for like not even a minute usually and get it out of the tin. Get my offset spatula. Gotta loosen it from these little corners here. Now I watched videos after I was done testing all this stuff and there was like recipes where you had to leave it in the oven and stuff like that. I didn't do that with any of mine and they all turned out fine. Still warm, but I have chef hands so. <laughs> Doesn't really affect me, but you might want to wait a little bit longer. It's just super light and airy. Now we're gonna let it cool for a little while before we slice into it. There's something else I wanted to mention that I can't remember now. 
I'll probably remember once I get back and we start slicing. Okay, I remembered what I wanted to say, where I was making buns and flatbreads with this, and I don't have any special silicone molds to make like buns and stuff, so I tried just doing like forming them on a sheet tray, but unfortunately when they rise or proof, they don't proof up, they proof out. So I ended up getting like flatbreads, but they were delicious still. Like they were like maybe like that thick at the end of it and I just cut them in half, like big ovals and filled them with whatever I wanted and they were super good. There was something else too. My brain is not working today. Sorry, brain farts today. What I wanted to say is this is by no means the end of my experimentation with this bread. This is what I found so far that has turned out amazing, but I have not tried anything with oat fiber yet. And I want to do more experimenting with the whey protein isolate because that loaf looked exactly like white bread. But we just need to add some stuff to it to make it less dry and more flavorful. So I'm sure this is not going to be the last you see of me making a protein sparing bread recipe. <laughs> Well, on to the macros on this. I didn't actually write them down or figure them out exactly. There is more fat, there is more carbs than the traditional protein sparing bread. Because of the heavy cream powder, it's two extra grams of carbs on top of the egg white protein powder. And then the fat is a little bit higher in this. You can definitely get, I like to slice this pretty thin and you can definitely get at least 16 if not 18 slices out of it and I believe it was 18 grams of fat for the whole loaf so that's one gram of fat per slice if that's what you end up slicing it into but I can't wait any longer I want to slice into this delicious loaf of bread oh, it smells so good I just love the smell of fresh baked bread I'm gonna slice it right down the middle How soft that is. Holy cow. That's what that extra allulose is like. So soft. That allulose just works wonders for making our baked goods soft. And I don't think the psyllium husk adds much flavor or anything to it. I think it just adds a little bit of extra fluffiness to our loaf. And see we got air pockets from the yeast. get some irregular air pockets and stuff from the yeast and if you didn't put your batter in exactly right but it is so soft like bendable tear it's just like regular crust the crust gets really crispy from the allulose in the squish test it stays squished the more allulose you put in the more squished it'll stay like it's not bouncing back at all it just stays smushed in there it's so good this is the closest i've come to regular bread it's so good I definitely do prefer the honey because it gives that honey, like a honey wheat flavor, you know, but it's good with the inulin too. Just so light and airy. So good. I hope you guys try out this recipe for yourself among all the other variations. I know there's tons out there to try, but if you really want some yeast flavor in your bread, give this one a try. Don't think you'll be disappointed. If you do make this recipe, don't forget to tag me on Instagram at Keto Upgrade Chef with pictures of your delicious keto bread loaves. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.